The next factor which I want to consider would be would relate to sleep. And if we think about the past or the original classical Bouteka briefing method, Dr. Bouteka wrote that yeah, when people achieve high level, we have less and less sleep. He himself and some of his doctors had like very high oxygen level, two, three minutes would sleep like two, three hours only, naturally without trying. It was great to know. By testing students, uh, I was able to develop kind of just by observation, so-called, I call briefing sleep chart, uh, is able to predict uh, with pretty good accuracy the maximum duration of sleep. So, for example, if a student gets 30 seconds for the morning CP, we would sleep six, six and a half hours, very common result. Somebody with CP um, 50, 60 seconds would sleep no more than five hours naturally without trying. So we wake up, we have full of, we are full of energy. Even if, even if we try, we would not be able to sleep longer. We may get like a nap during the day, but not longer sleep. And that's a period in the normal briefing course. So we have more system more understanding how it works and what are the levels in achieving uh, better and better health and how, would it, how it is going to influence, for example, duration of sleep and other factors. Now, next uh, factor which became very strong for the normal briefing course is based on the idea that our morning CP, in fact, like the morning body oxygen test result, is the main factor of our health. I don't recall any Soviet or Russian sources where we would suggest actually that the morning CP, our main number, maybe they do exist, maybe they kind of slip off my memory, but it's definite emphasis in the normal briefing course that how much is the result of our body oxygen test as soon as we wake up in the morning. That's the main factor of our health and it makes total physiological sense because there are, uh, I think I have probably about 12 Western studies where doctors found that people have to actually highest chances of acute attacks and exacerbations during the same part of the day regardless of the name of the disease. So we tested various health conditions, totally different teams of doctors and we found that all this asthma, heart disease, angina pectoris, coronary artery spasms, stroke, epilepsy, diabetes, all these health problems get worse from 4 to 7 o'clock in the morning where people produce most damage uh, to their body because of heavy breathing. And so the four morning CP logically became a central factor which reflects health in, in the normal breathing course. Apart from that, I also believe in the idea that when teaching briefing retraining, it is exceptionally important for a practitioner to address factors in a certain order because when students address factors which are influential for them right now, then we are going to have an improvement and in increase in the parameters, in improvement in the uh, well-being, less symptoms and so on. And so therefore it was really important to systematize all these methods and techniques which relate to sleep. There are many methods, and techniques, ideas which we can apply, which we can address uh, in relation to lifestyle during sleep and apply even certain special techniques. And so normal briefing course it became a course where these methods became systematic so that we can provide students with these techniques, test these techniques, see how they influence and so on. So testing sleep positions, development of ideas related to sleeping seating, effects of nutrients on sleep, on morning CP and so on, effect of essential fatty acids, effect of physical exercise on sleep, development of special swaddling methods became a part of the technique. Here, like one of the techniques, not only belts, like it was used by Soviet doctors, by Dr. Boteka, we also developed more advanced techniques and in fact, like one of my uh, students, Volker Schmitz from Hamburg, from Germany, uh, he developed a swaddling vessel which can be used uh, during sleep in order to achieve high morning sleep.